Before I begin my video, I just want to let you guys know that I have a patron, Vladimir Ivanov. If you guys want to support me on Patreon, just go to patreon.com slash master. Thanks, guys. Hey, guys. Welcome back to another calculator programming with Tim. This might be like the 35th or 36th episode. I don't really remember right now. Um... I would check if I had internet right now, but luckily I was able to replace my batteries on my calculator. Um, so I am going to basically make a program that does this. Now if you guys don't know, the Ackerman function is a very interesting function with computer science. It pretty much needs recursion or storage of memory because as it does its recursion, it kind of grows very very quickly like it starts off with addition and then it upgrades to multiplication and then exponentiation and it just keeps doing that um, for each number um, as I think either M or N is bigger I can't remember which one but it grows very quickly this is actually a an image that I have here that I had taken um, where I had solved it for a particular number and you can see in the upper left here I have a table and as you can see for the smaller numbers um, it's small right and then over here you'll see that I have <clears throat> some work that I I did to f try to figure out um, what it was and then I was able to find out some repetition so um, all you really need to know is the basics <clears throat> which is this right here uh, you start off with the function um, and I think the base case <clears throat> uh, Ackerman of 1 1 is let's see no Ackerman of 0 0 is just 1 so so if you just have a of 0, 0, then that is equal to 1. And then you just kind of go from there. You'll subtract 1 from m, and you'll subtract 1 from n every now and again. But um, oh, yeah, well, if the first note if the first number is 0, then you get then I guess it evaluates to this one plus 1. So Yep, this would be 0 plus 1, which is 1. So you have a whole array of base cases there. So let's go ahead and make... I actually want to make two versions of this because it's kind of easy to make like a recursion version. But I kind of want to make an array version where you, you have the challenge of not using recursion. Um and you have to use loops because supposedly it's kind of impossible to do that but it depends I think it it says that it's primitive recursive if you look it up on Wikipedia um, or I think maybe it's the simplest case of something called non primitive recursive I can't remember which one but I think what that means is that you need like an array like you need to store memory um, in order to keep track of like how the function is growing otherwise it's you can't really just do it with regular loops um, unless you have arrays okay so let's see here so I'm going to create a new program I'm just going to call it Ackerman Okay, and I can only put one end, but I think there's supposed to be two. Um, yeah. And so what we'll do is we'll call itself. So what we'll do is we'll just check to see if. Um, yeah, I guess we'll, what we'll do is we're just gonna set n and m when we begin. So we'll just we'll just check to see if m is zero. Um, 
Man, it's been so long since I've coded on one of these things. I remember how to do it, but I just don't do it very often anymore. Um, but this is what I have to do to keep up my YouTube channel and views, because this is what people still like. So, if m is 0, then um, we want to return n plus 1. So I guess we can just display, you know, n plus 1. Or we can set its value, because we're going to be returning values, right? So I'm not sure if we're going to do that as a continuation or how that's going to work, but we can do, I guess we can store it into C. And as long as we, hmm, as long as we know it's the last one that was called, I think it's okay, it'll work. Okay, so here we know that M is greater than zero because if it's not, well, we, we did something kind of undefined to begin with, so. M should be greater than zero here, and it should just be a natural number. Now this is where we check to see if n is zero. So if n is equal to zero, then and we'll put an else and an end. Okay, and so here we know that n is 0, and we can call the Ackerman of m minus 1. So what we do here is we, we hit program, we call Ackerman, and then um, m minus 1. Now here's where it's really, we got to remember that's kind of tricky because we want to make sure that whenever we finish the function that n and m are always set to their previous amounts because the, the reason is is because we can't just save them to some variable here. If we save them to like g or something, this function can call itself, then can call itself, then call itself, and it can keep setting g. So what we have to do is just make sure that whenever we're done, we just set n and m to the original values. That that way, when we know that way, we know that when we call this one recursively, n and m will be set properly. So that all we have to do is increment or decrement them. So so here we know that we just have to we just have to subtract one from m. So m minus one store into m, right? Um, and then n we can just keep the same. Right, and then obviously we're, we're going to have to add 1 back to m again if we want to return the correct number again and expect this thing, which is the same function, to return what its m, uh, return its n and m to its original state. Okay. Now when the else, okay, this is going to be a little, it's going to seem a little tricky. Okay. Um, oh, this is, impo this is impossible, isn't it? Because we, we, we will need a, I think we'll need a matrix. Okay. So here's, here's, here's what I'm thinking. This is why I think we need a matrix. So here's the sheet here, right? Um, here's my else case. Okay, now if this is the this is a this is a problem I have. We need to call the Ackerman function again. We need to pass it m minus one, which is fine. But for the n, we need to set it to whatever this returns. Hmm. Now the reason why this bothers me. And we might be able to figure out a way to go. Okay, so this is going to be our new n for whatever for what we're calling. 
but the problem is is that we're not incrementing or decrementing it so there's we have we have nowhere to save it um, what I could do is maybe I could save it but it wouldn't be saved as an M or an N it would just be saved as like a C or something like that because what's C? C is your return value okay so what I'm thinking is We might need an array because like I can I can try to store it in P or something to say like parent or something. Um and then set whatever your P was to its original thing. Like use like a temporary variable like T or something like that. So whenever you go down one more level No, you can't do that either. You can't, you have to use an array, I think. See, I think this is the problem with that. <laughs> I'm already trying to use recursion and I'm already failing at it. Wow, this is crazy. Because we, we don't have a stack. See, because in TI Basic, this is kind of a silly thing right here. Because I'm using, I can't pass it, very, I can't pass parameters. So I don't even, I don't really have like a st program stack. I just have like a, a position stack, but I don't have a local variables. So I, even if I wanted to, to use recursion here, I would have to use, I think I'd have to use a matrix anyway. I really do. I think I'd have to use a matrix. Um... And the thing is, like, this thing can branch two different ways. Right? As it's going down the tree, as it calls itself, it can branch. Oh, wow. Okay. So it took me until the time that I decided to actually write this to figure this out. Because I thought I could just you know, program recursion in here. But I, I realize, like, you don't have... If you call yourself twice recursively, not just once, okay? Because we don't just have, like, a, an array we can assign. We're calling ourselves twice recursively. So we actually have to store separate... You know, we'd have to actually have a... I guess we could have a stack. So we could have an array where we store however deep we are. And so like at the top of this, we could just increment n or whatever. Not n, not this n, but we could increment some variable like x and store you know, whatever we want to store in it, like n, our m, our n, things like that. I guess that's what we'd have to do. So, I guess we do x plus 1 stores x, and then now list 1 of x, whoops, right? So we'd have to do something like that. And then every time we return, we'd have to get our original like variables back. You get what I'm saying? So then when we're done, we do x minus 1 store the x. So that, that way we get our original 
um, values back. Okay, so basically once we call once we call it, what we can do is instead of just doing m m plus one stores m, we can just do l one of x stores m. Does that make sense? Does that work? I think it does. Because you're, you're still doing a stack. Right? You're still doing a stack. But we want to keep track of how many times we call it. Right? So what we could do is we could have, okay, so return we could we could say return to C. Let's just call it R for return, and we'll say C. Um, C is just going to be a global counter for how many times we've called ourselves. So it's going to like show a really big number eventually. Okay, so here's here's what we do. We need to call Ackerman of M comma n minus one first before and then get its val its return value. So um so then so what we we gotta just decrement n so n minus one stores n which is right and we call the Ackerman function Okay, so R is going to be set. So now what we do is we take R, and we set that to be our new N. See? See, because on here, this is going to be our new N. So whatever this returns, that's going to be our new N. So, and then, of course, our new M is going to be M minus 1. Right? But remember, when we called this, this could have updated our m and n. So we have to, we always have to fix them, I guess. Every time we call it. So L1 of m of x, we're going to store as m. And L2 of x where it stores n. You see that? Store r into n, m minus 1 into m, and then we call it again. Okay. Okay. And now we have another return value. Okay. But we're just going to return whatever this returned. Right, so and then we can set, we can reset these uh, values. So L1 of x stores m, and L2 of x stores n. See that? Okay, so I'm going to test this against our thing. Okay, so I'm going to make a new program. It's going to be call ack. Okay, this is going to be our initial call just to make sure that we set everything properly. Um, so it's going to prompt for our m. Okay, it's going to prompt for our n. It's going to store 0 into C. Okay. And then it's going to just call the Ackerman. And then what it's going to do is going to display the return value. So that's how we're going to call it. So M. So I'm going to look on my little table in here. Right here in this picture. Right. 
So if I call it with three comma one, I should get 13. So three, one, lists. Oh, I forgot to set the X. So X should be zero, I guess, as well. So zero stores X. Let's try that. So three, one, okay. Okay, so it counted all the way up to 13 calls and then it returned uh, a two. So I'm not sure why it did that. Um, let's double check our R. Okay, that should not be a two. M minus M minus one N n minus 1 and this is going to be the inefficient way to do it by the way because it's going to call many recur uh, many it's going to call itself many times recursively so after we do this we have to do the array version where we store everything in a, in a two-dimensional array or what the calculator would call a matrix okay n minus 1 So here is our set. Oh, this one's not right here. Let's let's do something simpler. Okay, if we just call zero zero, we should get one. Okay, that works. If we call one one, we should get three. Nope, it's not working. Okay, let's call let's call zero one. We get two, which is right, and let's call one zero. And we should be getting two. So we have a problem already when we call where m is one and n is zero. So when m is one, okay, so it's not this. And n is zero. So here we go. M is one. So we skip this. We go to here. N is zero. So we do this. We do this. Hmm. So it's somehow screwing up at this this section. Um, M is one. So we subtract one from it. N is zero. Oh, that should be returning a one. Because if you look at this, if M is one and N is zero, Right? 
then you have one, one zero. Now it's zero zero. Right? I mean, it says that this one is going to be equal to that one, right? So I think my table is wrong. Oh, I copied it wrong, didn't I? I don't know if I copied that wrong. Okay, so I think I gave you guys the wrong function, actually. Because if you look right here, I don't have an N here. I have a 1 there. So, that's my problem. This paper, I think, is wrong. This might not, it's supposed to not be an N. I think it's supposed to be a 1. So I'm going to put a cross around that and just put a 1. So, let's change that and see what happens. Let's go through here. Yeah. N minus 1 and Okay, so that means that here, I'm just... I actually have to set 1. I have to set N to 1. So that I would actually... I actually would need this L2 here anyway. Let's try that. Maybe that'll work. So if I try 1, 0. Okay, that is more like what I'd expect from my table so far. Okay, we have 3. This is working good. So 3, 1 should give us a 13. And see how many calls it's already making. So to get, <clears throat> just to get a, a simple way down look, we already have like hundreds of calls going, but we get to 13, okay? So check this out. See how I have a 13 there? So, A of 3, 2 should be 29. Okay, so if I do 3, 2, it's going to go pretty deep. <laughs> it's going to go pretty deep, and then it's going to get us 29. Oh, sorry guys. So my alarm goes off at 9 o'clock. So that's pretty nice. Um, that is going to take a while. And this is exactly one of the reasons why I want to essentially one of the reasons why I'm going to what's called memoize it. Memo not memorize, memoize, which basically means uh, to store all of these values from all these different function calls, which many of them are just the same. See, because I passed the numbers 3, 2, right? See how it already has 500 calls? Okay, there we go. We got 29, so it works. But notice how we, we did 541 calls. 541 calls for how many? 3, 2. 3, 2. So if going from 0, 0, zero up to three two how many spaces is that think about that for a second that's not 500 that's that's only about that many right one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve so it should really only take 12 calls total but we we took 541 already just from small numbers imagine if you put like a this thing jumps astronomically. Look up the Wikipedia page. You have jumps, like astronomical jumps that you can't even describe in exponentiation. Huge, huge numbers. Just from putting like, you know, if you called Ackerman of like 50-50, like the universe 
isn't big enough for that. In fact, it's probably not big enough for something even a lot smaller than that. It's it's crazy. Thanks for watching my first episode with the Ackerman function. Um, there's a second part, and that's where it is memoized and programmed without using recursion. So if you guys want to watch that, it's about an hour and a half long. And that's basically part two of the Ackerman function. Thanks, guys.